Hey, good afternoon to you. It's now 406 News Talk 105.9 WMAL, where we are making sense of the news. Coming up, 5 o'clock, Nick Fondacaro is here from the Media Research Center. We'll talk about CNN being sued for over a billion dollars. That's a lot of money. Why did that happen? Nick's got the details. You can join us, 888-630-9625, 888-630-WMAL. Tomorrow, a big event right here in Washington, D.C. You'll be able to support women and their sports uh, in the uh, Take Back Title IX 2024 bus tour. Again, arriving uh, just outside Nationals Park at the bullpen tomorrow evening. For more details on this, I want to bring in Paula Scanlon now. Uh, former collegiate swimmer, a spokeswoman for the Independent Women's Forum. She joins us on the phone. Paula, good to have you back with us. Thank you so much for having me today. Nice nice, nice to have you here. Tell us about Take Back Title IX, the point of the bus tour, and what people can expect tomorrow in D.C. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, I'm so excited to be back in D.C. Obviously, it's a huge uh, stop for us. We have a lot of great speakers coming. Martina Navratilova is one of the big names that will be there tomorrow, if that excites some people. But... The entire purpose of what's been going on is this month of June, notably Pride Month. We've gone around the country, the entire country. I mean, I don't even know how many cities I've been in at this point. Um, and we're raising awareness to what's happening to Title IX. If, for those listening that are unfamiliar, the Biden administration has tried to rewrite Title IX that essentially says that sex uh, is equivalent to gender identity, meaning if you identify as a woman, you can take all female opportunities, and that includes sports teams, but this is not just about athletes. It actually also includes academic scholarships as well as bathrooms, locker rooms, uh, even dorms. If you show up to college thinking that you're in a female-only dorm, you can show up and have your roommate be a man. Um, and so we're raising awareness to these issues that are happening, and obviously it's going to go into effect on August 1st is the, the date that it's supposed to start. So that's why it's so urgent that we do it now and we do it in the month of June, and we make sure the public is aware of what's happening and get people loud and have people tell their representatives they don't agree with this. Right. If So the Biden administration's position is that being a woman is merely made up and that it's in your head. That's, that's an all-out attack on women. Exactly. And it, what's so shocking to me about it is how many women don't see it as that. I don't care how you stand politically. I don't care if you're on the right, you're on the left, you're somewhere not on the spectrum, you're in the middle. I, I don't really care. If you're a person, you should have an issue with this. It's not just women, because everybody has a woman in their life. And this is not just athletes. This is going to deny girls the opportunity to go to college at all. Uh, it's taking away academic scholarships, right? They can award these academic scholarships to boys. And it's just it's it's just crazy. And the fact that the public is not aware of this and they're trying to pretend that this is not happening is is the most concerning part. I, I love the bus, by the way. I'm seeing images of the bus. It says protect women's sports. It has uh, a, a series of pictures of so many female athletes uh, uh, on, on the side of it. Very cool to see. Uh, and it says take back Title IX. Uh, what I was troubled to see, though, was during a stop this past week at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, that some ghouls uh, apparently in the middle, in the dead of night, came out and they vandalized the whole bus. Uh, they put graffiti all over the bus that included such phrases as trans women are women, protect trans kids, that would be advocating for child mutilation, hate group, and bigots on board. Another said that it was a transphobic bus. Somebody hung a blue and white transgender flag near the bus. The bus was egged. Uh, what can you tell us about this? Now, you, you park a bus, you're trying to advocate for women, and you're under attack. You know, I'm going to be honest. Uh, I'm shocked this did not happen sooner because the other side only has the tactics of, of being hateful and leaving things. If they would like to have commentary and saying, you know, this is the reason why I think people who identify as women should be able to compete in women's sports, we would have that conversation. If you're going to leave commentary about that on the bus, go for it. I'd be happy to read it. But they don't have science on their side on this issue. So the only thing they have left to do is to attack us. And I, I honestly, I, for me, it, it's so sad. Could you imagine waking up in the middle of the night and saying, let's go, you know, uh, write graffiti on a bus? Like, could you imagine that being your reality? And that's just what makes me sad about those on the other side of this issue is that they really don't have anything other than attacking us and just calling us names and just writing mean things. Yes. 
And it's it's sad. It's really so just sad. Has that really been your experience throughout all of this Paula Scanlon? That you haven't found anybody who advocates for allowing men to take opportunities from women. There's not a single one who wants to have a reasoned debate on the subject because they seem to be they moralize about it constantly. You would think that they'd be willing to sit down and talk with you. I mean, I've I've done my fair share of campus speeches. I get questions. I think the only thing that they tell me is that I'm going to contribute to somebody committing suicide if I don't allow them to play sports. And my answer to that is I'm really sorry that that is someone's experience, that if they're not allowed to undress in a locker room with a bunch of girls as a man, that they would kill themselves. I don't think that that's a valid argument. And I also think that's just emotionally manipulative. That shows yeah. you have no no other background. And that that is the common, and I, so you know, it's, crazy that is to bring up that is the really the common place that they go they and they if you notice on the bus they actually wrote next benedict life mattered or something that that's the kid who identified as non-binary or something that was killed in Oklahoma, or committed suicide in oklahoma and they say that all of us on the uh that are speaking against this issue her death is our fault they wrote that on the bus so it shows they're trying to use that same tactic yeah, it's and it's it's like it's like a form of moral blackmail. If we if you don't let me violate uh, you or your spaces, if you don't let me steal your opportunities, I'm going to kill myself. What is that? I don't know, but it's it's the common and again that's the most common argument that I've heard, which is just again I, I don't even know at this point. I'm just like I feel sorry for them. Yeah. You know, I I don't. There's nothing to really argue back and forth about that, or even to debate. And there's no productive conversation there. It's just we're clearly on such different levels of logic that there's just not really a conversation to be had with people like that. Uh, the the uh, event we, you and I are talking about, Paula Scanlon, tomorrow, Our Bodies, Our Sports, Take Back Title IX Summer 2024 Bus Tour, arrives at the Bullpen. That's just right across the street from Nationals Park uh, tomorrow, Tuesday. Uh, it's going to be uh, – the doors open there at 5.30, and the program begins – at six o'clock, Paula, uh, I imagine uh, based on what you just said, we're going to hear from a lot of uh, great athletes who are going to talk about the importance of protecting women. Yes, yeah, so there's going to be a lot of speakers. I will be there. Riley Gaines will be there. Martina Navratilova will be there. Uh, a bunch of other athletes that have been vocal on this issue. Um, I think it's going to be one of our best stops yet. So if you're in the D.C. area, I would not miss it. Um, I mean, you got opportunities to see some of your favorite people have a great time. Obviously, the bullpen is a great location. Uh, love the area down there in D.C., so I think it's, it's going to be a good one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you've, you've got a great list here. I see uh, Selena Soul is on there. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people remember her uh, time, track and field star. Uh, you're going to have you're gonna have a lot of great speakers. There's also a musical performance tomorrow by Alexis Wilkins uh, from Nashville. Uh, so that, that should be a good event. And uh, it's so important. I—, I I really do think that um, the reality of this is is lost on a lot of people, certainly in the media, but broadly throughout the throughout the country, because there's not that many people who are willing to vocalize what you're saying, Paula, which is what you're witnessing really is an all out attack on women. Yeah. And, and the thing that's so sad is the polling shows us that 85 percent, at least, of people agree with us on this issue. So it's, it's really just about mobilizing people to get vocal. And I, I think that the misconception is a lot of People come up to me or they message me and they say, you know, I'm just one person. What is my opinion on this matter? Yeah. It's about just being comfortable saying that with the people around you, right? I'm not asking anyone to go write tweets on Twitter or go on the news and then share this opinion. But to just have that opinion in your small circle of people, you can let other people talk about it who will then invite more people to talk about it. And before we know it, it's going to be everyone saying the same things, everyone writing letters to their various politicians. Yes you know, or empower even the person that ends up being a really big voice that does go on the news. So that's what I always tell people, that these changes come from the grassroots. These changes come from the everyday people. They don't necessarily come from people like myself and Riley and others who are super vocal. And so that's why it's, again, so important for us to engage the public on this issue. Uh, Paula, how much progress do you think you're making here? I, I wonder, uh, you know, because there certainly are, are kids per, uh, who are participating in sports all across the country. Uh, at various levels, whether it's the community level or in their schools uh, or certainly in the college level. Are, are you beginning to notice that more people are speaking up and saying, no, a boy cannot participate in girls sports? No, a man cannot participate in women's sports? Uh, are you seeing leadership uh, on this issue or are people still pretty quiet about it? No, I would say, I'm. Um, you know, when I was first going through this, there was no resources for me. I didn't know anyone to talk to about this. I was super isolated. Now I work at the Independent Women's Forum where I have a whole team of women that are working on this issue. I've met so many other 
active, uh, activists from other organizations as well that are speaking up on this issue. So I'm very encouraged. I think, honestly, the most encouraging thing I will say is that we are starting to see groups from the, the left side of the aisle speaking up, right? There's these sort of more feminist, traditionally feminist groups that are speaking up. Martina Navratilova, obviously, lifelong Democrat, she's speaking up on this issue. And I think that that is really where I know that this is going to win. Because if we have people on both sides of the political spectrum when today, everything is divisive, right? Yeah. That's how I know this is going to be super successful. So um, that's what gives me hope. And again, seeing again the diversity of people that are speaking up on this, all ages, all backgrounds, everything, I think that's how I know that this, this will be successful. And again, we've passed laws in 26 states now, have state-level legislation to right. prevent males from competing in women's sports. So that is incredibly hopeful, and I know there's going to be more states coming down the line that are going to pass legislation as well. well Martina Navratilova, of course, has the courage of convi her, her convictions, and she is a legitimately big star to come out and, and speak on this issue uh, for sure. But I, I do wonder, I'm like, where are the rest of the kind of the kind of those A-list female celebrities who are out there? I, where, I, I still don't know why the Williams sisters haven't spoken out about this or why you know, maybe even Caitlin Clark, as much as I like her, I kind of wish she would. I know she's got, she's just starting a professional career. Maybe she's like, oh, I don't want to say something. Say it, baby. Now's the time. Katie Ledecky, who's like, you know, is about to swim in a couple weeks right here in the Olympics. I'm waiting for her to come out and say something. Do you ever hope that they'll join you, Paula? I do. But you know what I will say is there's silence on this issue, right? They're not saying I support these trans athletes like Katie Ledecky for example, has not made a statement saying that she supports Leah Thomas's NCAA championship win, right? I think that silence does show us where they stand. And unfortunately, I think we're sort of in a situation now where these people have sponsors um, and their sponsors are going to drop them if they speak out about this. And again, it's very easy for us everyday people to just say, well, forget about them, drop the sponsorship. But that yeah. can look at, you're going to have a hard time being able to afford to go to these competitions. You're going to have a hard time being able to compete in the Olympics and do what your job is and so i think that my biggest answer to that part is we have to start building up brands that will sponsor these athletes that have our have our values that we know we can depend on and we won't have athletes worried about losing their livelihood if they simply say i don't want a man to compete in my sport yeah yeah no you're right there there's a lot of forces who are involved here and that's a big piece of this uh i paula scanlon thank you so much for your time today uh, Paula is going to be a part of this. You got the Take Back Title IX Summer 2024 bus tour right here in Washington, D.C. Uh, going to be arriving uh, there tomorrow at the bullpen uh, right across from Nationals Park. The event begins at 6 o'clock. Doors open at 530. Paula, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Nice to talk to you again, Paula Scanlon with the Independent Women's Forum. Always great to have you. Yeah, this presidential debate set for Thursday. You'll hear it here on WMAL at 9 p.m., but also, it looks like a bunch of the television networks are all carrying uh, a feed of it. So it'll be interesting. I, I'm actually looking forward to Friday morning. If Fox gets bigger ratings for uh, CNN's debate than CNN does, <laughs> that'll be amusing. Uh, let's see. I've got Ivan calling in from Florida. Line three. Ivan, good afternoon, sir. You're on the Vince Colony Show. Hey, hey, Vince, how you doing? I did, uh, Vince, I just wanted to return to the, the debate topic for one second. This is this is more than just about Trump versus Biden. This is the end of America as we once knew it, or the you know the legacy of liberty uh, lives. Yeah. You know the, the Democrats are trying to destroy destroy the country, and uh, and you know the 24 hour news cycle causes us to forget what what the Democrats actually did the first three years of Biden's administration. America should never forget, and Trump should remind us that the Democrats. You know, they, they, they forced vaccination on our kids. They lost businesses that were forced to shut, stay shut down. They lost careers. They lost careers. They lost their pensions because of the vaccination. This steady parade of millions coming across the border, the trample our border, the flights of illegals coming, coming into the country, the energy crisis, all of this stuff. And, 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 you, and you can't even mention it all. The herd looting, the non-prosecution of crime, the Jew-hating Hamas rape and murder supporters. You know, it, all of this stuff they taught our kids, gender mutilation, Vince. Yep. They taught them this racist CRT. And we forget all of this stuff happened in three years. And I, and, uh, I, hope, that, I hope that Trump just reminds us that all this is is an election year pause. And you can count on if Democrats win, they're going to continue trying to transform our country into, into what, it, what it shouldn't be. And I, I, just, I just hope that, that Trump just reminds us 
uh, it reminds the independents because all all true conservatives know what it is. But the, yeah. the, the independents needs to be remind us that, that that the country itself is at stake, and Democrats will continue what they did the first three years. And we have a tendency to kind of forget that. Um, anyway, I, I just I know I'm ranting on. No, and you're I, not ranting I, at I, all. That's I, perfect. I, Ivan, no, you're you're totally right. Which is why you and I care so much about this, and so many people within the sound of our voices right now care so much about this yeah, election. Ben, it's a war against you know the Judeo uh, uh, Christian and American values. They're they're just trying to destroy it, and they and they think that they think that we'll forget what they did the first three years. Well, this is you why know, it's I, so critical. This is why it's so critical to remember. And you're right. This is why it, one of Trump's responsibilities is to remind people, uh, and it, that's our responsibility too. Uh, I've been certainly here in my in my capacity. That's one of the exercises I do every day, every single day as I'm preparing. Uh, for this program is to go back in in the history of certainly our country, but definitely during the Biden administration and constantly pull up context for hey, remember, this is what he did to our country. I, I do it every day. I'm always pulling in my notes because it is hard in a 24 hour news cycle. You get distracted by sh so many things to remind yourself of what happened is one of the most important things you can do. And to remind yourself of our country's actual history, they're constantly trying to tear down statues and tear down the American flag. They're attacking various iterations of the American flag right now and acting as if it's extremist to fly them. It is not. It's a part of the great tradition of this country. And don't let them take that away from you. You're totally I'm right. This, um, Vince, I'm just hoping that Trump will just remind them that this this is about America. It's, it's about more, more than just Joe, uh, Trump versus Biden. It's about America. Amen. Thank you very much, man. Yeah, thanks, Ivan. No, Ivan's, Ivan's on to a lot of good points there. And uh, he summarized it really well. And he started, you heard him mention uh, the forced vaccinations, the destruction of businesses, the destruction of livelihoods. I've got an update for you on that story as the United States Army is now admitting for the first time that the COVID jab ruined at least one soldier's life. More on that and what it can mean for other soldiers and troops in a moment. It's ahead on the Vince Colonnais Show. Hey, good afternoon to you. 435 now, News Talk 105.9 WMAL, where we are making sense of the news coming up top of the hour. We're going to be joined by Nick Fondacaro with the Media Research Center and Newsbusters as CNN is being sued for upwards of a billion dollars now. And it involves Afghanistan. We'll give you the details ahead. You can join us at 888-630-9625, 888 630 WMAL, the United States Army is now admitting that the COVID jab gave a soldier a very damaging heart condition and has upended her life in a very meaningful way. This reporting comes to us from Catherine Herridge, Catherine Herridge, formerly of Fox, formerly of CBS. Uh, she is report. She's doing her own independent reporting now on uh, what about COVID vaccine injury in the United States military, something that the Biden administration, specifically the Pentagon, has been reticent to admit. Uh, this story, this soldier's name uh, is Carolina Stanzik. And you can hear her explain uh, here to Catherine Harris. She never had heart issues before, but then the COVID jab changed everything. And the Army, as, uh, as I point out here in a memo, is now admitting everything you hear from Carolina Stanzik. Meet Carolina Stancic, a specialist in the Army National Guard. She takes 27 pills every day after suffering her first heart attack while on active duty. Did you have heart issues before you joined the military? Not a single heart issue. I could run 10 miles at a time, play basketball, and now I have trouble just standing up. What's to blame? I mean, the only thing that would have changed was the COVID vaccine. And that's when everything flipped upside down for me. Government records obtained by our investigative team confirm Stancic has a serious heart condition. And her case may open the door to service members who believe they were harmed by the Defense Department's COVID vaccine mandate. According to this Army memo, your debilitating heart condition can be caused by either COVID-19 infection or the COVID. A little interruption there. COVID I don't have a single positive test for COVID nineteen. Let me let me make sure that that's a that's an error in our audio. To be crystal clear, she said this could be caused by either COVID nineteen infection or the COVID nineteen vaccine. Right, uh, Corey, is that what we had in the audio? Yeah, just making sure. That's that's like kind of the most critical portion. <laughs> 
uh, the audio uh, jumped out on us. Let me play it. Let me make sure it's not on my end here. By our investigative team confirm Stancic has a serious heart condition, and her case may open the door to service members who believe they were harmed by the Defense Department's COVID vaccine mandate. According to this Army memo, your debilitating heart condition can be caused by either COVID-19 infection or the COVID-19 vaccine. Oh. Have you ever tested positive? Oh, the audio did work. The problem was my computer. Not, uh, not, uh, it wasn't an audio editing issue today. So uh, problem solved. Thank goodness. For COVID-19. I don't have a single positive test for COVID-19. So is this Army memo an acknowledgement that your heart condition is the result of the COVID vaccine? It 100% is an acknowledgement that it was a result of the vaccine. How about that? How about that? So that's that's uh, that's pretty critical, isn't it? How many people did they force out of the military as a result of all of this? They said, you get this or else. And uh, a lot of people ran out of the military in what was obviously a political litmus test. It was designed to filter out people based on politics, not based on any real health advantage that came with the jab. Catherine Herridge said, how hard was this to fight for? How hard did you have to fight just to get this basic information? How hard did you have to fight within the bureaucracy to get this memo? It really was a 19-month grueling process. Does uh, the Defense Department have a special responsibility to you and others who believe their COVID vaccine injured? They're fully responsible. I was neglected, and the medical care that I needed to get was not happening. And so the damage was more by delaying the response. And this is a young woman, too. This was, uh, she's she's in her 20s. She's 24 years old. Is that now she's 24 years old now? Or at least at least maybe when she got the jab? One or the other. But she's a young woman. She's very young. And uh, she said she got the Moderna shot. She said she got both of them. And each one, uh, things just started getting worse. In early 2021, she received her first COVID shot. I received Moderna 1 and 2. What was the reaction? Cough, chest pain, sinus um, pressure. There was like a headache. A month later, she received a second COVID shot. The reaction was intense. I was experiencing severe neuropathic pain. Um, felt like burning sensation throughout my whole body. And I was having chest pain, breathing issues, and a really high heart rate and dizziness. It felt like a balloon was blowing up in my chest. Military oh. records oh. independently reviewed by our team confirm a debilitating heart condition known as postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, or POTS. It's where your heart and your blood pressure don't work in accordance with each other. What does it mean day to day? Day to day, you don't know what's gonna happen, right? And so I will wake up, my heart rate will hit the 180s, 190s. On social media, Stancic documented her struggle to get an accurate diagnosis and timely medical help. I don't know if I sound good or not. Uh, I feel like I can't breathe. You know why she couldn't get an accurate diagnosis or timely uh, medical help? Politics. Politics interfered. So she wants simple answers, and there are answers out there, and she wasn't being given them because of politics. How completely corrupt. Can you imagine going to your doctor's office and they refuse to tell you something because of political interference? Stanzik said it got so bad that she considered taking her own life. And I would just want to read you some text messages that you've uh, shared with us. I've said it before, but if I was alone, I'd 1,000% consider a permanent exit. Did you seriously consider suicide? I did. Um... I talked about it with my cardiologist and I just told her, like, I'm ready for this to just be done. Like, I don't know how much longer I can take this. All right. More on this memo now. They say uh, they've linked the vaccine to a health condition. The Army acknowledges. Take a listen. Finally, in October 2023, the Army Human Resources Command concluded Stancic's heart injury was considered in line of duty by the preponderance of evidence. The memo states research has confirmed a link between COVID-19 infection and a debilitating heart condition called POTS. POTS was also linked to a lesser degree to COVID-19 vaccination. I jumped to the part where it talks about vaccine and I was like, that is exactly right. You read that section and you said, that's me. That is me. I'm vaccine injured. Exactly. And how important is that service connection? Service connection gets you benefits when you get out of the military. And so without that, I would not get any benefits. 
for these conditions. Does this Army memo open the door to recognizing other service members who believe they are COVID vaccine injured? I really am hopeful that this will provide them the help and care they need. You'll notice uh, something the Army is doing in this memo. Matt in Rockville wants to highlight here. Line four, Matt, uh, you're on the Vince Colony Show. Hello, sir. Hey, Vince. Yeah, it's, it's super irritating because what they're doing is they're offering just enough truth of, oh, okay, well, it, it could have been caused by the vaccines, but it really could have been caused by COVID. They're giving you enough of the truth, but then they're also giving themselves an out. It would be like me saying, hey, I got drunk yesterday. It was either due to the vodka or the shoes that I was wearing. I, I really can't tell. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. When you lost your balance, which one was it? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a yeah. huge thing. So inside of this memo, uh, which you wisely point out, they keep emphasizing uh, that, oh, yeah, this could all be linked to COVID or possibly asterisk footnote the COVID vaccine. Uh, and that's what she's focused on. And for good reason, because she says, that she got these two shots, one after the other. One, she had some bad reactions to it. She got the second, all of a sudden she had some really rough reactions. And we are to believe that there's a high probability, at least in the eyes of the Army, that, oh, that was actually COVID. Yeah, it's, it's you know, the, the vaccines are perfectly fine and safe. Well, we're a long way from perfectly fine and safe. It's also weird that they started holding back the, the bars, uh, the uh, the what was it uh, with the yeah you, the the, the shot, vaccine yeah the the, the the system that you report vaccine injury on yeah we're a far cry from that so give ourselves another you know another five years and I wonder what's going to come out and the long term effects of this shot that was rushed through yeah because if they're willing to admit even a little bit of the truth now it just feels like they're just trying to give you a little bit to to grasp onto. But more will be coming out. Don't dig any further. We, we admitted that it could have been from uh, it could have been from the vaccine. Just don't dig any further because if you do, it'll turn out that a bunch of it came from the vaccine. Also, this is a young, healthy woman in the military. I mean, what have we learned throughout all of this? She's not the target demo for the at risk. It's it's just so preposterous, and yet uh, she was made at risk by this jab. Uh, she's finding out quite unfortunately. Matt, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Smart smart point. Matt pointing out that the army. Uh, building itself an out in this memo, very newsworthy memo that Catherine Harris is sharing with us. Uh, let me finish with this piece of audio. Uh, this is uh, th this uh, Army Specialist Carolina Stanzik saying that she has to get a pacemaker now. She's in her 20s. She has to get a pacemaker now. When our team recently interviewed Stanzik, she faced another medical crisis. We are sitting down just days before you're having major heart surgery. I'm getting a pacemaker in two days. How does it happen at 24? It's like, that's not what I expected for myself. It sounds like she's 24 now. I thought I was going to be doing marathons, and I'm literally sitting here, like, not allowed to drive. You know, based on interviews you've given previously, one criticism is that you're an anti-vaxxer. Another criticism would be that you're doing this story because you're trying to push an anti-vaccine agenda. That is not the case. My story, my health is my own. I've had to live these traumas. And so I would never want to ever see someone go through the same thing as me. She experienced it. What is she supposed to do with this information? With what happened to her? Shut up. Don't tell anybody. No, she can tell people. She's allowed to. Perhaps we can learn something from it. There was, and, and especially with the Army saying, yeah, actually, there are studies that link explicitly the jab to this type of heart condition. This woman's life has been upended. Uh, our, our buddy David Strom, who you heard earlier on the program, he's been summarizing this today at Hot Air. He says, after her heart condition developed, she was separated from the Army. She lost her pay and her health care benefits. And due to her heart condition, which caused fainting and resulted in heart attacks, she was unable to get a job. So her livelihood was destroyed by this. Isn't that amazing? So the Army's threat in the first place was do it or else your livelihood is going to be destroyed. So she did it. And her livelihood was still destroyed. Buy it. The Army finally acknowledged it after Caroline faced tens of thousands of uncovered health care costs. It took over two years of fighting the bureaucracy. But Army Human Resources acknowledged Caroline's heart condition was caused by the jab. Well, David writes that here. But again, they build in this little escape hatch or COVID possibly. And that her injuries were a result of actions taken in the line of duty. That's huge, both for her and for other soldiers facing similar circumstances. 
She's now eligible for benefits that will, among other things, cover her health care costs. Uh, so you do wonder, uh, will her story, that's another reason to tell this, will her story open up some opportunities for other soldiers, other troops who have had to, who have experienced this very thing? Really is, uh, really is important. And it's so crazy that it's it taken this, it's 2024. This is, you can, and, and if you're looking at Biden's legacy, look no further than this being a huge chunk of it. Donna's in Frederick on line four. Donna, good afternoon. You're on the Vince Colonnade show. Hi, good afternoon. This is heartbreaking to me, and I've followed this for a long time. You know, I'm inclined to think, yes, I believe the virus was definitely something that was likely associated with Fauci and the Wuhan lab. But the bigger threat that I've seen, even within my own family, are the vaccines and the boosters. Those who got boosted multiple times ended up with all kinds of things, myocarditis, immune deficiency disorders, uh, I have jumped through hoops to try and assist people to find products to offset some of these symptoms, and they are out there. And it's just, I expect class action suits galore. I think even Gateway Pundit had an article about vaccine injured. I believe it was yesterday. I might have seen it, just the headline. So oh. the information's getting out there, and I just pray people use discernment and are careful this, and look out for one another. And, and in the normal world, Donna, you know, prior to the COVID jab, any vaccine that produced an injury of any meaning, people were allowed to discuss this and like talk about yeah. what are the what are the side effects? In fact, every medication that's sold on the general market, you ever see the television advertisements for these things? They have like they have endless side effects at the end of oh, side God. effects. Include blah, 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 blah. So it's normal. Then, yes, what happened with the COVID? Vince. What happened the with COVID? Though? The government, the government forces it on everybody, and then there are no disclaimers. There are no television commercials. Yes. There's no fine print. There's right. none of that. Somehow mm -hmm. they get a special deal where the big pharmaceutical companies get enriched to ungodly sums, and not a single side yes. effect ever has to be listed on television. And, Did you notice? And Vince, one more point I want to make: if the virus was so lethal. Why didn't the homeless all die on the streets? Remember when they first sent us those videos of people in China just falling over and dying? I know. So naturally, everybody was petrified. But in reality, when it gets down to brass tacks, nothing happened with those people. Well, they it it all came down. It, it all came down to, as you know, it was uh, it was it was the elderly and the overweight and the lies that we were told from a very early uh, moment about all of that are are grotesque. The fact that Fauci downplayed natural immunity, the fact that nobody ever said, hey, go for a walk. Instead, they said, lock yourself inside. Uh, it, it was so truly insane. Uh, and the, the consequences of this are going to be felt for generations. And, I'm, and we're looking at it here, uh, Donna, with uh, this woman's life being ruined by the Biden administration, who decided to turn her into a guinea pig. And now she's suffering from the consequences. Donna, thank you, as always. I appreciate your call. It's 4.51 now. Phone lines are jammed up now. Lots of people want to weigh in. Let me get Katie and Vienna, line two. Katie, good afternoon. You're on the Vince Colonnade Show. Go ahead, ma'am. Hi, Vince. It just really hit home what you were talking about with Caroline, that um, I'm a 53-year-old, totally healthy. And then uh, because of my kids and quarantining from school and such, I ended up getting the vaccine. Uh -huh. And I... I just got a pacemaker in December, and I'm just disappointed in the medical establishment not going through and back to look at any heart implications that COVID and the vaccine have. Do your doctors, have your doctors had open conversations with you about this at all? You know, I asked my doctor about it, and he said, no, no, no. He kind of poo-pooed it mm -hmm. and said that, no, 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 it's only myocarditis, and we would see scarring. And, you know, that's not the case here. Yeah, well, certainly not in Carolina Stanzik's case where she's she's now getting a pacemaker because she's had heart attacks that the Army now is admitting may very well be linked to that jab. Uh, so, so, Katie, some, you know, basically some evidence for your theory here found in this Army memo. Exactly. And it's, it's just... It is what it is now. You know, it's the hand I've been dealt. And honestly, I won't lie, the pacemaker, it has corrected the issues. Yeah. But it took a while. They, there's a lot of tweaking. You have to advocate for yourself. And when the doctors tell you you're wrong, it's a little frustrating. Yeah, I can imagine. Katie, God bless you. Thank you for calling in on that. What a, what a nightmare to have to deal with all of that. Uh, ahead. 
We've got so much to get to. Uh, we'll try and get to more of your calls ahead, uh, certainly here on the program. And uh, coming up, I've got Nick Fondacaro joining us from the Media Research Center. We're going to talk to him in mere minutes about how CNN is now being sued for a billion dollars. There's a billion reasons for a lawsuit like this. We'll find out the actual one coming up.